Today on The Joy of Editing, we're going to take a look at the new update for Topaz Photo AI 2. This is version 2.0.3. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Let's take a look at uh, Topaz Photo AI 2, the latest update. This is version 2.0.3. On the screen right now, you can see the changes since last week's update, version 2.0.2. .2. They've added an image capture button. We'll get a look at that and see what that's all about. They added a 512 megapixel limit when processing to Lightroom Classic. They added a 30,000 by 30,000 pixel limit when processing to Photoshop. Now, this is a nice feature. They added resetting input values by double clicking the fields label. I'll show you what that's all about. They added a new dialog for updating. You'll notice that the next time you update next week, you might want to pause the video now and just read through the different fixes and changes since last week's update. All right, then let's get started. By the way, did you know if you have like a folder, let's say on your desktop, like I have this just one image in here, but Say I had 10, 20 images here. I could go ahead and select all of those images, right click on them, and then copy. And then once you're back inside of Topaz Photo AI 2, now you would think you could right click and just paste those images in, but the right click doesn't work. So then I went up into the menus to see if there was any way to paste the image or images in, and I could not find a way. But then I discovered on a Mac, if I hold my command key down and click on V, that's the shortcut to paste. And I would assume on a Windows machine, it would be control V or whatever shortcut you use. Try it out and see if it works for you. And let me know in the comments section below. But if I use the shortcut for a Mac command V, you'll notice I can paste the image right in there. Now, if I had multiple images, I could paste a bunch in at once. All right, let me show you a new feature. This is a simple new feature, but it's going to be very helpful. Now, this is an Adobe stock image. I'm just using it as an example. I brought it in and Topaz Photo AI 2 ran its autopilot on it. Now, it selected the owl as the subject because I have my subject set up for default in the autopilot preferences. I'm just going to click cancel here. So it's just sharpening the owl. And you'll notice all it's really doing to this image is sharpening the image. And you can see here's the strength and here's the minor denoise level that it has found. Now let's say I wasn't quite satisfied with the autopilot setting. So I figured I'm going to take the strength slider and drag it to the right to add more sharpening. And then let's say I felt like, well, you know what? I think it needs a little bit more minor denoising. So I drag this slider to the right. But then let's say I changed my mind. Now in the past... I couldn't, you know, I could drag this back to where that green line is right there. But if I wanted to get it back to the original autopilot setting, I'd have to reset the entire sharpening module right here. And then I would lose my strength adjustment, but I only want to change the minor denoise adjustment. So now I can either double click on the circle or double click on the name of the slider and reset it back to that autopilot setting. Now that's something new and I think it's going to be very helpful. Now that works for any one of the modules here. So for instance, if I double click this circle or the name minor denoise, let's just double click the name minor denoise. It'll set it back to the autopilot setting and it'll keep this adjustment here because I'm happy with that one. So you see what I'm saying? So that can really be helpful and beneficial. And again, that works for any one of these modules with sliders. You can either double click the name or the little circle there and you could reset it back to the original setting. I just have one more thing to show you. Now this image here, I went ahead and turned on the adjust lighting and the balance color beta. Now remember, this is a stock JPEG image. I don't know if I told you it was JPEG, but it is a JPEG. And I don't really use adjust lighting or balance color in my workflow, but for stock images, sometimes this can be very helpful because I felt this image looked a little too light. So if I click on show original, you can see it's really light. And the color balance does seem off a little bit, so... I balanced the color as well. So let me shut off the balancing color. And you can see it looks like that. And I'll turn it back on. And now it looks like that. It looks pretty good. Then you can come here and adjust the temperature and the opacity. And you can adjust the lighting setting as well too. 
But that's not really what I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you this new capture feature. And I believe they added this for social media so you could share like before, after images on social media, share it with your friends and so on. But I'm like, where is this capture button that they're talking about? Now you'll notice right now that I'm in the single image view. Now notice when I change to either a split screen, see I have a capture button, there's your capture button. It doesn't show up in single view, but it shows up in split screen view and side by side view. So what I could do is in the navigator here, I'll just center my owl on both of these sides here. And now we can see on the left is the before, on the right is the after. Now all I need to do is click on this capture button. So I'll left click it with my mouse and you'll notice it says view and finder. Basically what's happening here, and I'm gonna click view and finder, it saves it to your downloads folder, at least it does for me. And here it is right here. Now if I hold my space bar down, you can see it saves it out as a PNG file. And I looked at the dimensions of those files. If you have thumbnails open, your file size will be like 2243 pixels by 1205 pixels. If you don't have thumbnails open, then the file size will be like 2243 by 1289 pixels. So it's a smaller file, but then you could take that file, that PNG file and share it on social media or whatever you want to do, email it or, or whatever, but you can share your image your before and after. Let me know if you even think we need a feature like this in Topaz Photo AI too. Well, there it is. Now you know what's new inside of Topaz Photo AI 2 in this new update version 2.0.3. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon and also click on all so you get all notifications. And that way, every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing.